What's going on guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Harris and it's been a while since I've done a Pokemon TCG competitive video, but we're going to be going over my Players Cup 4 run. Let's get right into it. It's been a hot minute since my last Pokemon video. Uh, I think the last time that I did a like competitive style video was uh, my run for Players Cup 3. And uh, a little funny story about that, I actually missed the deck deadline when you uh, go in to submit your deck lists because I overslept. Uh, so I was not able to participate in the Players' Cup 3 second stage. However, since I did qualify, I did get my sleep, so that's really, you know, that's really the only thing I care about. But uh, this time, you know, uh, there's a little bit of a change with regards to the Pokemon Players' Cup. Now they've introduced, instead of if you make it to the top four, you get your own uh, little stipend for an international event down the future. Uh, now they actually offer regionals level pricing, so I believe first place does get $5,000 if you do happen to make it uh, to the final stages and uh, get that first place. You know, there's actually cash prizes now, which is pretty sweet. So, incentivizes me a little bit further to actually play in the Players' Cup and, uh, you know, we'll see how we can do, you know, once the second stage happens. The qualification process for Players' Cup 4 was very much identical to how Players' Cups 2 and 3 went. Pokemon gave you 50 keys, and you were able to use these keys in single elimination tournaments, where if you won the entire tournament, you got 5 tournament rep, if you placed in the finals, you got 3 tournament rep, and if you placed in the top 4, you got 1 tournament rep. I ended up with 104 tournament rep over the course of the PC4 qualifications, and I used both ADP as well as Picarom. And let's go over to Pokemon TCGO, and I'll show you the deck lists. So here we are on Pokemon TCGO, and before we get into the deck list today, I do want to shout out both Isaiah Bradner and Kenny Britton for the deck list themselves, and the extra help uh, with regards to my PSC4 run. So a big shout out to you guys, couldn't have done it without you. Uh, let's get right into the ADP list first, and from the looks of it, you know, kind of a standard list. Uh, in the beginning, the list was a little bit different, and we'll get into that in just a sec. But, you know, ADP, still a good deck. Um, everybody knows what it does. Alter creation, 30 more damage, and you take extra prizes. And we just want a boss boss in a couple of turns to win. And our main attacker is going to be a Forzation. Uh, Forzation is actually really good. Uh, we really want to start Zacian in our opening hand, and you use Intrepid Sword in turn one, and Brave Blade to just knock stuff out. Uh, as far as support Pokemon is concerned, we have three Dedenne, one Eldegoss, and one Crobat. Pretty standard. Once again, not too much has changed. The one Wild Wild, once again, it's really, really good. We want to take our opponents, Dedennes and Crobats, put them on the bench just to make them prime targets for us to win. Uh, this card's really, really good. And we have one Mew. Uh, so, one Mew was here for uh, the Urshifu, the Rapid Strike Urshifu, uh, with the, the Rapid Flow attack that's 120-120. Um, so that really, really helped against that matchup, as well as Picarom, you know, has its outs against that too. It could stop the tag hold. So Mew was really actually pretty good. Uh, as far as the items are concerned, uh, we have three Cherish, three Cherish Balls to help search out our ADPs as well as our Dedenes. Uh, we got two Energy Spinner, four Energy Switch here. We really want to get that turn one GX attack and, you know, Metal Saucer, Energy Switch, and our Manual Attachment will try to get us there. We have two Escape Ropes. Now, Escape Rope came out in Battle Styles, and Escape Rope uh, was fine in this deck. Not really, like, too impactful that much. Uh, I think we originally had, like, four e Escape Ropes in the deck, but felt kind of overkill. I, sometimes I didn't want them to switch, but I just wanted to switch myself, so I decided to go for, or we decided to go for the two and two split between Escape Rope and uh, Normal Switch. We got one Great Catcher as an additional Gust, four Saucer to power up our Zacians. For a quick bald search, and I decided to put in a couple of techs back into the deck. Uh, originally, we actually had uh, three EXP share, and uh, EXP share was fine at first. It actually wasn't too bad. Uh, it actually made Energy Switch a bigger card in this deck. Uh, but you know, over the course of time, energy, uh, EXP share wasn't really doing it for me, and I was getting into like the normal ADP hands. So I decided to. Cut the three EXP shares, and I added one Tool Scrapper to help against the Luke Metal matchup, which, if you don't have this, the Luke Metal matchup is kind of worse. Uh, we really want to get rid of those goggles. Those goggles are kind of, like, the biggest problem. Uh, some Luke Metal does run, like, the goggles, as well as Cape of Toughness. I think that's another, like, big thing that uh, hurts. So if you don't have the Tool Scrapper, the Luke Metal matchup is way worse. So the scra I'm really happy that the, the Scrapper was back in the deck. The Swell was also good because turn one power plant can sometimes hurt, right? We do run three Dedenne. 
Uh, one Crobat can get us out of it, but like, what's what's gonna happen afterwards? We still need to detonate the draw through the deck. So, Power Plant kind of hurts. You know, some Luke Metals played Power Plant, some E Turns played Power Plant. Uh, so that card was kind of annoying. So I, I decided to put the Swell back in, and then I put one Marnie because sometimes you know you have like kind of bad hands. So if you'd happen to draw into the Marnie, you could just Marnie and put all your resources back on the bottom of your deck and uh, draw cards, and it does act as disruption. You know, we can potentially Marty twice in, in, the, in a game because we have Eldegoss. So I was kind of, I was happy with this. I was happy to put the Marty back in the Swell as well as the Tool Scrapper. Honestly, like, if I just ran the four, like the three, e uh, the e uh, three e EXP shares, like, it would have been much worse. Like, if I ran the three EXP shares, it was kind of just much worse. And uh, I'm happy that I put those three techs back in. It really actually helped. We got four research and four boss. This is just our way to victory, right? We just want to boss every single turn and uh, just win in two turns. Uh, we have two air balloons, a little bit of mobility, and then the one rusty sword um, to put in the deck so we can reach the high 290 So uh, with Zacian, so we can knock out tag teams and stuff. And to round it out, we have eight metals and three water energies to round out the energy count. So yeah, uh, ADP list was solid. You know, ADP is still a good deck. Like it has good matchups. I think it has like maybe 50-50s or 60-40s like across the board, I think. It's it's still solid. Uh, I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised if I play ADP once again to the next stage if I actually, you know, wake up on time. But let's get let's get into the Pikachu list. So, on screen right here we have the Pikachu and Zekrom deck list. Uh, at some point, you know, ADP kind of fizzled out for me, so I decided to switch it up a little bit, go back to Pikachu. And um, you know, this this iteration of Pikachu is a little bit different than the past stuff that I've played. Uh, but it's always, you know, a Pik since Pikram is in the format, you know, it always do well, like it's always held its own and performed well at tournaments. So as long as this card still exists, you can never doubt it. Like, you know, Pikram is still good. Everybody loves the full blitz and the tackle. Like it's just, it's just a good card. So in this deck, we have four Bolton Vs and we, ideally in this deck, we want to go second and we want to electrify on turn one. So that's how we can power up our Mewtwo and Mew or the Pikram. Uh, and just in one turn, so the next turn we can just like power it up and do whatever we want. We can full blitz and stuff. This allows us to do that. Uh, two Pikaram as well as the one Raichu and Raichu is going to be our main attack, so we're going to copy today. Uh, Tandem Shock, once again, Tandem Shock. That 116 Paralyzed, it's always been good. We want to reset Stamp and Paralyze them so we can cheese out a win that way, buy us another turn. And, uh, you know, Tapu Koko Prism Star, always good. We want to accelerate as much as we can. And then the Mewtwo and Mew, we want to attack with this a little bit more than the Pikaram because, you know, it has more HP. And then the Psychic we, the psychic typing does help against the Urshifu decks. We do still have to worry about the Jirachi GX, uh, but once we can do that, you know, we can work our way around it. And as far as support Pokémon is concerned, we have two Dedene, one Eldegoss, and one Crobat to round it all up so we can draw some cards and go through our deck. Uh, as far as Search is concerned, we have four Quick Ball, Standard one Cherish Ball, as well as one Radar to help find our main attackers. Uh, we play four Crushing Hammer. Yep, this is a deck that plays Crushing Hammer. You know, ever since the online meta came to be, Crushing Hammer has just been a boon in uh, most people's, <laughs> like most people's games. I do not like this card. I think I flipped more tails with this actually in uh, my PC4 qualifier. So four useless cards in my deck. <laughs> so, but Crushing Hammer does help stop like, you know, it can help stop, uh, like, E-turn in sense. It's really, really good against them, if we can flip heads. Uh, but yeah. I have two Reset Stamp, you know, Reset Stamp is great. We just want to Reset Stamp uh, our opponent's hand low, so we can try to come back, and this is the comeback potential. We got four Switch in here, as far as mobility is concerned. One Chaotic Swell to help us against Power Plant and things of that nature, because we do play Mewtwo and Mew, so Power Plant does stop that, as well as the Dedene as well. We have three boss to gust things up. We have four Marnie as well. You know, the four, the two reset stamp and the four Marnie is really good at just disrupting our opponent. We just want to disrupt them and see if we can just like ride the train along to the win. So four Marnie was pretty good as well as four research to as far as supporters are concerned. Uh, two more air balloons. Once again, mobility uh, mobility concerns. We want an air balloon or a Raichu and Raichu so we can switch up and try to tandem shock as much as we can. And uh, two stealth hits. So. Originally, we did have two big charms in here, but the Urshifu decks do play uh, the Mimikyu from Cosmic Eclipse that blocks GX abilities. So if they damage our Mewtwo and put the Mimikyu down, we can't attack with it. So the Stealthy Hood does help within that regard. 
Um, otherwise, I don't think this serves any purpose. I think just this was here just for Mimikyu's. Because, er you know, without the Mewtwo and Mewgx, if they shut that down, the Urshifu decks are just going to clobber us. So we we wanted to put this in here uh, to kind of counter that. But I think Big Charm is still just good as a card. I think you probably should put Big Charm, but not really sure. We put I put two hoods in here, and these hoods did the job. Uh, as far as energy is concerned, we have 10 basic lightning and then 4 speed energy. And speed energy is great, because once we attach it to a lightning Pokemon, we draw two cards, and that's awesome. But yeah, this Pika list, you know, pretty standard. Originally, I had two big charm, and then we switched it to the two hoods. But otherwise, this list is, I think, just pretty standard. Nothing really too big as far as, like, battle styles cards are concerned. Not really much in the way of that. And I think this list has just still been the same as it's ever been, so... Let's get right into the Excel sheet and how I did along the way. So here we are on my Excel sheet, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of forgot to like keep track of what deck I actually used in the with regards to these keys. So it, these are just a lot of numbers. But as we can see here, you know, I started out kind of strong here on the Players Cup uh, qualifications. I got some wins as well as a couple of seconds. And uh, <laughs> then is when I started to kind of do a little bit poorly right over here. And I think at this point, this is where I started to switch decks. And when I did switch to Picarom, I kind of like did okay, at, like along right here. And then as like I started running to like a super dry streak. Like look at this, I I went to like zero zero zero, and then four more zeros. So at this point, I'm just like, oh man, Picarom's not really happening. Uh, it's not really treating me well. So I had to switch again back to ADP. And during the last stretch of the tournament. Uh, I actually did end up doing really, really well, and the last couple of keys I needed to hit uh, were all wins, so that was great. Uh, I think I was in into like, I had like 80 something rep into my final keys, so I really needed to finish strong on my last couple of keys to finish. And you know, when you're doing these keys, you know, 100 was a good number, 100 was really good to shoot for, and I ended up with 104 reps, so I think I should be okay into qualifying for the next stage of the Players' Cup. So, you know, it was it was a grueling journey, but at the end of it, you know, we did well. And uh, we should be good for the next stage of the Players' Cup qualifiers. So that's my journey. Those are the deck lists I showed you uh, in the past were there. Once again, big shout out to Isaiah and Kenny for the lists and all the help. And I'm excited to go into the next stage of the Players' Cup qualifiers. And hopefully I can do well and hopefully we can uh, advance deep in the tournament, maybe win some money out of it, who knows. Uh, if you enjoyed this, vid uh, this video, be sure you hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel down below, it really really helps me out. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to stream my play uh, PC4 next stage, but uh, if I do, be sure to follow socials down below like my Twitter and my Twitch and things like that. Um, I'll let you all know on there if I do happen to stream it, otherwise, you know, I'm just going to play, hopefully do well, and uh, that is going to do it for the recap. I uh, really appreciate everyone stopping by. Once again, don't forget to subscribe and everything like that, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.